welcome to the sports show. Mike, Max, Patrick, Royce, Lavelle, E. Neal, and Sid Hartman. And Sid, uh, you've got that soft spot in your heart for those underdogs. I know when, when the Yankees would lose, you'd feel bad for George Steinbrenner. Tonight, you feel bad for, for Kraft. Bob Kraft, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Jack Harbaugh is a character of all time. I got to know him pretty well when he was in Michigan. Jack Harbaugh is the father to the two coaches. And uh, you got the two coaches, and then the uh, Indiana basketball coach is married to his sister. That's his son-in-law. Right. Tom That's Crean. his son-in-law. Isn't He's been uh, all over the uh, world, coaching all over the place for a long time in Michigan. And uh, those kids were great athletes, a great athletic family, and uh, to have two brothers in the Super Bowl, it's hard to believe. It'd be a million to one or something like Sid, that. Sid, wasn't he at Iowa for a while, too? Wasn't he an assistant at yeah. Iowa, too, Jack Harbaugh? Very Michigan, sure. And then Santa, Western Michigan was a head coach, San Jose State, I think. Yeah, yeah he had a run at that level, down. right? And then, well, and then his job. son went to Michigan and things changed. Yeah. A lot of, a lot I would of places. think uh, he'll get... We'll see him on TV on occasion during the New Next Orleans couple of weeks. Super Bowl yes. week doing yes. a few yes. interviews. Yes, are we satisfied, Lavelle, with the, the participants in the Super Bowl? I think it's going to be interesting. People, will, uh, not have, uh, people are thinking the Harbaugh thing is going to get beaten to the ground, but I don't see what the problem is. I think it's going to be great reading for the next couple of weeks here. The one thing, uh, maybe it's because of uh, the brothers or something, but notice how both teams made kind of controversial decisions during during the season that kind of put him in a good spot. Jim Harbaugh uh, starting calling Ka Kaepernick and setting, setting down Alex Smith and um, Har his brother firing Cam Cameron and bringing in Caldwell to run the offense. That happened late in the year. Yeah. yeah. Both those teams are willing to make big decisions during the in season and it's paid off for both teams. Of course, you're close to Bryant McKinney. What is it? <laughs> 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 well, I'm happy for Randy Moss, who I liked a lot, and I had a great relationship. And again, the with. underdogs in those days, yeah. yeah. And uh, also, especially for Matt Burke. He was all ready to retire, and they offered him a ton of money, and he couldn't turn it down, so he signed a three-year contract, and uh, he's in Super Bowl. It's uh, great for Matt Burke. Yeah. The difference between Matt Burke and McKinney is, I don't think Matt needs the money. <laughs> and Brian, Brian, may need, Brian, Brian may need this payday. Brian needs the Super Bowl How about money. the Vikings angle? Did you get Randy Moss with the, with the 49ers? Yeah. Well, that's, Lavelle, uh, that's you cover all these guys. So who are the best money managers? Do you, do you think baseball versus football? Do you think baseball are pretty good money managers versus football? You know, McKinney always it seems like he's in debt somehow. <laughs> Uh, you know what, uh, ESPN did a hell of a series about a year ago. About, yeah. Uh, uh, it was called Broke, about all these athletes that have frittered their money away. I think there's stories across the board in every sport of an athlete either losing money in some business or just parting it away. I mean, Kurt Schilling. Yeah, How, yeah of one bad, terrible exactly. investment. Yep. You'd think, would you think of Kurt Schilling as a guy who kicked away $42 million, but no. that's what he did? I think it happens all across sports. I don't know if you could just say one sport or the other. Uh, it's more prevalent in. A guy who did a good job for Ron Simon an attorney who uh, unfortunately is uh, not in the best health, he handled a lot of twin guys. He handled... Uh, well, he had Ra Mo Molitor. Radke, Molitor, Herbeck. Keith uh, Fonhorst. Huh? Keith Fonhorst. Keith Fonhorst. He took care of all of them in very good shape. He was a very tough negotiator. In fact, he negotiated my contract with CCO for a while. <laughs> and I finally told him, I'm not worth that money. I, I'll just take what they give me. <laughs> that's and and that, that's the way you've always lived your life, kind of that yeah, humble that's underneath true. the radar kind yeah, of that's thing right. where you, that, you always say, I, my value is not that great to this station. Well, I'm very upset about the Atlanta loss, though. Uh, to have the whole game turn around because some fella's running past the quarterback and puts his hand out and it touches his face mask and... They're going to have to punt, and instead it's a first down. Is a was a travesty. Everybody thinks the NFL yep. officiating with the replays and stuff is so good. It's a travesty that uh, Atlanta, and then 
San Francisco went on and scored the lead touchdown. I think it's a complete but, fiasco. But the Falcons, the Falcons screwed up at fourth down when Matt Ryan couldn't complete the pass. Tony Good Gonzalez morning. had beaten his man. He was open. Yeah, but and he Gonzalez also, was having a big game. And he also had a bad shoulder, Matt Ryan, from being driven into That's the right, turf. Yeah. But we didn't call anything on that one, but we right. called a touch on the face mask. You said that earlier. You said you think those replacement referees might have been better than these. No, you didn't. Joke. Did he you did really? say that one day. What? I mean, the <laughs> you know, there was a call. You know, there was I don't one of those. Think, uh, <laughs> I don't think these officials are that uh, big improvement over what the other guys were. What, what's the difference? Yeah, you, you had that farce out in uh, uh, Green Bay when they lost that game, and, and then because of that, they made uh, uh, critical of all those officials. Well, I'm not so sure these guys are so great. There's no consistency. What, what, what's the difference to you between the replacement officials and the officials when you say one is the same? What do you look for in a game in terms of if it's well officiated or not? Are you looking for positioning? What are you looking for? <laughs> the NFL officials are no different than the umpires behind the plate. Certain umpires, the hitters know what they call, right? What they do call and what they don't call? Right. Well, it's a little different situation in football, but you don't know. These guys are, are not consistent well, at these all. These are supposed to be our all-stars today. Terry well, McAuliffe, he's done Super well, Bowls. And he well, these calls are so he consistent. He made the idiotic call. Jeff Seaman, uh, right. Jerry Seaman's son, had the uh, New England-Baltimore game today. Just talked to him the other I day. I got a question for you all about officials. Why do they allow themselves? Baseball, you run out and argue with the umpire, they throw you out of the game. Basketball, they call a technical foul on you. Hockey, I, they'll call on sportsmanlike on the bench. They can just abuse the lip. Jim yeah. Harbaugh went absolutely insane today, and they didn't. The guy didn't throw a flag. And they have the power to. They could if they. Yeah, but they yeah. never do. They Why do they let him no, get away I with murder? They got the power to do it. Yes, they can. You can call them. But I'll say this: after watching an HBO series last year in the NHL, Crosby and those guys say just about anything they want to to the officials. Yeah. And, and I guess it, what is it they say? As long as you say it to their face, it's not personal. They won't. Happens in the NBA, too. I remember when I was covering a Wolves game, and Garnett, had, there was a foul on Garnett, and uh, the other team was shooting a free throw. I heard Garnett tell the referee, don't you ever make that call on me again. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably didn't. <laughs> it was the NBA. That's right. Take a break. Come back. Stay with us. What a perfect, warm place to belly up. Ooh. Have a good steak. Nice good salad. Nice pork Warm your belly Ooh, today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 80 below. And yeah. Watch, watch the game. Crazy. Visit with Pat. Great place. J.D. White's downtown Minneapolis. And, and the they valet park, so you could get it right out next to the door and walk right in. Really you don't have to freeze to death. And I would no imagine better. that they benefited greatly this week from this weekend, Sid, from what we... This is a local winter bonanza that we have not seen with all these teams at home. The Timberwolves, the Gopher basketball, Gopher hockey, and the Wild. And they came in droves, the fans did. Well, I wrote a piece of my column, uh, 120,000 people attended sporting events and other events. Uh, they had that truck thing over at the Metrodome, 46. How um, was that? <laughs> <laughs> what I couldn't understand is driving back from St. Paul, all these parents with little kids, all little kids taking them to that thing. To the like Minnesota Valley. Wild game wow. we're on to. Are you talking about the trucks or the Minnesota Wild trucks. game? Trucks. Oh. That's right. Well, I've said, you want to know what the Wild success is? It's getting families. More yeah. than any team in town. More than baseball, more than anything. They get families to go to hockey games. They do. They get yeah. mom, dad, and the two kids from Woodbury. You can't take, you can't take a family to a football game. No. <laughs> No, but but it was quite a weekend across the board. Uh, unbelievable. I keep on talking about they shouldn't be competing with each other, but the Gopher Hockey had 10,000 for both North, North okay. Dakota games. The but Gopher Sid, it doesn't do us any good economic impact. We, they would no, have right. spent that money somewhere yeah, else. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Those they folks that came from Grand Forks would have... You know, down, the fact that downtown St. Paul was full of people for the first time in five months, it would, would have no, been that way anyway. Great, it didn't make any question sense. Question for the board. Question for the Jay board. Jay Wiener was a great... <laughs> right about that all the time. There was the pre, they had the speech. same economics professor from Indiana. We quoted him more than we do Ron Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> Same I mean, with Mark what? Gannis on stadiums. Yeah, Remember right. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. A drop in uh, Justin off at the parking lot. Those uh, Metro Transit had about eight cars on one thing, and everyone was full. What of course, all those people would have been, been, been They would have been, been here. Home. They'd spend their money someplace. Start with the Wild, Patrick. I, I, obviously, Got pretty much what we players. thought in that 
they are forgiven quickly in this market, oh, and they forgot. Yeah, did you look at NHL crowds last night, though? No. At full every place. Was yeah. it really? Florida had, like, 2,500 more than capacity. Really? Really? Wow. Everybody came out, yeah. Now, what happens on Tuesday nights, that's what we'll find I out. I don't want to be there. Say they were, they were there. You were in well, Allery's last night. Yeah, they were that's... Wall to wall, huh? Oh, it was nuts after the game at Allery's. It, was it? Wow fans, of course, they've been imbibing a little bit. Uh, running up to me, going, "We're bringing Lord Stanley's Cup home, baby!" <laughs> they, after that one game, That's huh? Right. Well, it was impressive. You know what? You look at the power play because they got Suter and they got Koivu, and, and you can't and move Heatley. Heatley. <laughs> you got Heatley and Parisi. And like that's some major firepower, yeah. man. But but you got some X factor. I mean, if Granlin's pretty good yes, Granlin's for pretty a rookie, good. if Pierre Marc Bouchard can play, I mean, holy God, that's a great boost for them. It's great to see him back on the ice, having covered you know Justin Morneau and his comeback from concussions. It's good to see I uh, would think, Bouchard get uh, back on the ice after his ordeal. I would think that coach is on the spot. Uh, He's got some talent. He's going to have to win with sure. those guys, or he, he won't be there long. He's got talent. He just has to stay out of the way. You know, don't mess, don't screw up the good talent. My question is this: Who will win more games this year, the Wolves in the eighty-one game schedule, or the Wild in a forty-eight game schedule? Well, well you know, the Wolves. I, I went to count shootout wins. <laughs> oh no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. here you go. Now you want to get complicated. Yeah, I know. It's Try true. to the figure out how they disperse are, points. This is the. Uh, this is the damnedest disaster of injuries I've ever... The, the worst than the 2011 Twins. I've never seen anything like this with the Wolves, have you? Never. I mean, even the coach. Yeah. That's what uh, we She must be in... Uh, well, they're working hard, you know. He's in the hospital all I was there the other day. He had made an appearance and he came to practice the other day. Oh, he did? Yeah. And, and he didn't coach them, but he just talked to the guys. They've had one guy play every game. The Red guy Red who had a bad Red back Red in training camp, and they didn't think Red he'd Red be ready to go. Red now. Red now, wow. Schmidt had played every game, but now he's out. He's for out. Three or four games. It's unbelievable. Well, how about these guys? They signed a 10-day contracts coming through for him well, this is This is what's really strange, is that you can sign a guy in the morning, and the two of them combine for 26 <laughs> points. <laughs> how about that? I mean, how do they even know the players? I can't pronounce well, the Houston jelly guy's name. Lately. What happened to them? What's Kevin telling you? He lost seven straight before uh, last night. I don't know. They've they've had some injuries too. They've had uh, several players get hurt. Yeah, yeah. They, but they, you know, Why they, they, so they look completely play? different when you saw yeah. them last time at Target Center to last night. They just yeah. there's no flow. They're missing shots. There's nothing to them. Why do players get hurt in basketball? That's way. Well, hard to understand. You see, see, you see those guys driving in the basket and get clobbered and hit the ground well, twenty times a day. Like JJ Bray is always going to get hurt because yeah. he's fearless and he's yeah. not big enough to go in there and he's always on the floor and he's always drawing, saying, trying to draw fouls. I mean, he's going to get that, hurt just from faking being fouled. Yeah. Let me say this: Tubby didn't complain, but uh, Rodney Williams uh, wore a knee brace. He could hardly walk in practice when I was over there before the Michigan game. And uh, uh, who else got hurt? Uh, uh, Joe Coleman didn't practice all week. So they were in good shape for Michigan. Well, let's save that topic so we can talk about it when we come back. You're watching the sports show. Stay with us. Audi Minneapolis, look them up, boy. Right off of uh, 394 and General Mills Boulevard, they've got some great vehicles. That Q7 is just perfect for these cold, cold, bitter nights in Minneapolis and beyond. New ownership, same great people, led by Bruce Bonin and the whole crew. Stop on by and find out what you've been missing in Audi. What, Would, what color is that sweater? Green. Oh, is it? <laughs> is this St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> no, oh, 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 sit. No, but it's not St. Patrick's But it's green. warm in January. That's not Irish green. <laughs> Tell me about the Gopher game the other night. What were your impressions of the Gophers versus Michigan? Are the Gophers good enough to play in that top three or four in the Big Ten? I think they are. I just mentioned before we went on the air, he didn't want to complain about it, but uh, I go to practice all the time. Not all the time. Yeah, I go there quite a few Quite a few days a week, three, two, three at least. And uh, uh, Coleman wasn't practicing practically all week, and uh, and Rodney Williams uh, uh, was in bad shape. But that really no excuse for losing to Michigan. They had a chance at the end to pull that game out. No, they they never had a chance. Chance. It's a little like Indiana. No. Yeah, everything. Oh, Indiana, Indiana, they had a chance. They didn't have a chance. In, in, against I Michigan. think Michigan 
might be as good a team as there is in the country. Well, they got the best guards. Yeah, their point guard's outstanding. But we thought the big difference is going to be underneath. The Gophers would take advantage of them, Lavelle. They never did. No, you, didn't have, you know what? The thing, Maxie, about the Big Ten basketball this year, every third game is going to be against a ranked opponent. It's that deep, you know? Right. And, and, and these teams are going to get knocked off. Indiana and, went out and lost, you know? And guess what? But, Wisconsin's going to be tough because their coach can win games for them. Right. Speaking of Wisconsin. They lost to Iowa. Wisconsin. Did they today? Yeah, yesterday. Guess I didn't even see that. Guess who's ref of Wisconsin this week? Eric Curry. Yes, he Team is. Team him up, baby. Oh, yes, he he's, got, he's got Bo Ryan he's this He's got week? Bo Ryan this you week. You mean for the Gopher game or a different game? Different game, not the Gopher game. I don't oh. think it's the Gopher game. How about that? You see, he stays pretty busy this time of year. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's yeah. doing different conferences. So, stuff. so but, yeah, I think Maxie makes a good point. I thought Mabakwe would kill him inside, and he did early, but that kid came, that freshman, McGarry, the – the, wherever they found him, yeah. he played Mabakwe pretty tough. I thought that was a big difference. How well, did they pull that Burke out of Columbus, Ohio? I know, I know. Something what a player. The game too. But one team shoots 40 free throws. That was in Indiana. Indiana. That we the Gophers shot more free throws than Michigan did. Because oh, it's a did. homer. Yes, they did. The referees are homers, man. They fall into the home crowd and they start oh, calling. Not not Eric Curry. No, not Eric. Oh, not Eric. No, no Eric is no. about as fair as it is. No. <laughs> no they, they beat him with the threes. When the Gophers start making a comeback, threes, 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 threes. The one guy who played well for the Gophers was Austin Hollins. He was, uh, yep. he played very well. He guards people. He's turned into a heck of a player. Bob he, Knight is against the three-point shot, see? I think it's too late. Bob Knight? Uh, Wait, that's like being against the DH. Against. Said it's what team over. is Bob Knight? The argument is over. What team he is Bob Knight coach? from the start because it, what team does he coach? it turns the game around. Bob Knight. I, I think it's the greatest thing. It keeps you around, keeps you watching games, that and the shot clock. He claims that it doesn't tell the true now, competitive value of the two teams. You had a chance to talk to Dick Vitale. What were his impressions of the Gophers? He thinks the Gophers are pretty good. He thinks Michigan might be the best team in the country. In the country? Yeah. Sid, I, I wish you and I were still selling that book. Vital gave you enough plugs on the air that night. We could have gotten rid of some books, man. Did he? Oh, about five times he gave Sid a plug. Yeah. Wow. Really? You I didn't even know. know it when you were there, huh? Well, I'll tell you a Vital story. Well, what's the guy that uh, had the cancer? Jim Valvano, when he was here in the Final Four, right. had back pain, yeah. and then that's where you tried to intervene. I let me think, let me guess if I've got this story right. The Mayo Clinic, and he wouldn't go. Well, and he might be living today. What does that have to do with Vitell? <laughs> huh? Vitell was with him. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Dutch, 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 always, Dutch always tells the story about how they go into Detroit for the opener in the year that didn't count. And to he, play Michigan, you mean? No, to play Vital. Oh, Vital in Detroit. conference game, yeah. and they did the smoke and the mirrors and the whole thing, and Vital came out like a conquering hero, and the Gophers kicked his <laughs> rear end. He said by the end of the game, he was holding his glass eye in, and he was he looked like he looked like he got beat you talk up about with a the stick. Deal he, you talk about the deal he's got. They flew him in a jet two hours before the game. Well, they should. Uh -huh. ESPN. Everyone who draws a check from ESPN ought to send him 10% because no, he no made doubt. him. No yeah, doubt. Right. Take a break. Come <clears throat> back. The sports show. He's Alex a, he's a good fool. Score with the Minnesota Vikings. Go to kickhungerchallenge.com. Click give and score. Wayne Gostrowski and his group got a big Kick Hunger Day coming up this Friday. Then, of course, Wayne will be at the Super Bowl Ooh. hosting the big How event. good is that going to be in New Orleans, the best mm. food place in the world right there? It's fun to yeah, talk to Wayne, too, because he says if you're, if you're trying to get something done in New Orleans, you got to learn there's a different way of getting things done. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. They didn't Last build time. those bridges by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I was in New Orleans, I was there for Jim Finks' funeral. Dick Ames got his airplane first and we flew down there. And it was the oldest Catholic church in the world. Yeah. And across the street was where they sold the slaves. I think oh, maybe boy. in the United States because the Notre Dame Cathedral is 1200 over in Paris. So. Oh, is that right? Is that yeah, so, yeah. Charlemagne's, street, Charlemagne's coat is in that <laughs> one. He, was a, he had something to do with the Magna Carta, I think. <laughs> it was... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Lavelle, as I watch this, I still I can't believe that we're talking about Darren Mastriani in center field for the Minnesota Twins. You know, I, I thought know. by now we would have seen some veteran show. Or well, they still might. There's still time, man. I, I, we're at the point of offseason now. Where players are restless now, and and, and um, you know Scott Pasen is out there. He could be an option, although that really doesn't excite me. Um, I'd rather see them go with Aaron Hicks, and, and, and I don't. But Terry Ryan's got to tell let Gardy hire take Hicks North if Hicks is good enough in spring training. He's got and, to. And uh, Terry, I think uh, Gardy said the other day yep. in an interview that uh, he got that promise from uh, yep. Terry yep. that they will give Hicks a legitimate my, chance. Uh, my thing the is the first field. year they had Carlos Gomez. Gomez at two fifty three struck out a lot, hit a few homers. Have you ever gone and to Hicks is about the same age. And I, I if Hicks can hit two fifty, he's going to draw a few more walks and steal some bases. Have you and ever that's got to be considered success. Yeah, have you just ever keep, gone? Can you just stop talking? <laughs> Oh, here we go. Have you ever gone to spring training when an Indian field is unsettled as this one? No, no. Or outfield. No. The thing is, they got so many developmental issues going on. Ploof is still developing in third. You don't know who in the heck we your go, middle infield is. You you right save save some of this good stuff for next week. All, All right. right. See you back here next week, everybody.